I'm here with Daniel Chang from VintageMagic.com. Hello, and guys. We uh, this is a pretty incredible day for uh, for our channel for Magic players in general. We'll get into that. But um, first thing I wanted to know is, uh, tell me about like where you, where you come from. Like, like I'm interested in like your familial background. Like, yeah. what got you to where you are today? You know, from point from point A to point B. How yeah, you... yeah. Well, that's gonna be a long story. All right. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I. Uh, I Short version. Uh, well, thank you again for having me here. I've been, you know, I'm watching your videos. Great interviews, great content. Hope you guys, you know, uh, check more of his videos. Awesome. I thank like you. it. Thank you. Um, as far as my background, um, I, I've always been a collector my entire life. Uh, I've played Magic uh, since '94. Uh, not really good, you know, but I've uh, tried to. I still play today. Old school Magic. I don't think you're really professional. I mean, no, you, you, no. Hit, you competed. Right? Well, yeah, yeah. I was at a. Uh, I, I think I. Uh, top aided a uh, tournament, uh, like an old school tournament in GP Vegas, two thousand nineteen. Yeah, you're 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 good. You're yeah, really I mean, good. I mean, I'm okay. I'm okay, but I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not like professional, you know. But I, I enjoy the game. Yeah. And um, but I've always been a, a collector, a fan of Magic, uh, my entire life, pretty much. So the story goes: I basically in um, nineteen ninety four, uh, in freshman year of high school, I was at lunch. And where where were you, where were you uh, from? Bellevue, Washington. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And um, Sammamish High School, and I was walking down the aisles, the the hallways, and in the drafting room, uh, there was some other friends I had, right, who were playing this card game. I'm like, whatever, it's lunchtime. I go there, and they're you know, no sleeves, by the way, zero sleeves, as revised edition. They didn't exist back then. Yeah, uh, the, I, I think they, I think people were using other those uh, penny sleeves or other. Mm. Yeah. So we we kind of had this. And I was like, man, this. This, these cards are beautiful. I mean, I literally, I was picking up cards like Wrath of God, Vesuvian Doppelganger, you know. Uh, there's no Black Lotus because it was 94. Um, and this is wonderful. And I said, why are you guys not playing these with sleeves? They're like pieces of art. They go, no, it's a game. So check it out. <laughs> so we go there, play the game, and um, always appreciate the game as an art collectible. And uh, I also love the game, too. It's a great, great game. And... Uh, then I uh, I also started sports cards when I was younger. That's how I first started. And like, yeah. were your parents like were they were they like yeah. on board with it? Like, were they like did yeah. they? I mean, that seems like that would be a tough gig to break into. Yeah, great question. My mom actually, you know, uh, uh, my mom was a just typical Asian single single parent. Wanted me to either be a doctor, lawyer, or engineer. That's mm -hmm. all. That's all I had. That's a, that's my choice. choices. That's all I got. So. I decided to become a magic dealer and uh, just go against the grain. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think for me, um, uh, to your question, was about. Uh, well, it's like you go from like just playing yeah. in high school to, to now. Yeah. Well, we can get into what. <laughs> right, 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 right. You said you wanted to kind of. Yeah. When, when did you. Yeah. Like, when was the takeoff? Like, when did you realize that you yeah. were like a higher echelon? And I, and I do say this. I, mean, I know you don't, you don't yeah. like to necessarily. Oh, I mean, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate that, but I. I I'm just one of the guys. Yeah, you yeah, are yeah, just yeah, one yeah. of the guys, but you're one of the guys. I mean, yeah. like it's well, thank, well, thank you. I, I, I've been really blessed to be able to work with a lot of the awesome artists, the magic, uh, the collectors, and the players. You know, they're awesome. You know, and uh, I, think, like, I think I think to answer that question, like, how did it take off? Was that like um, a big break for you? Like, yeah, yeah, first, yeah, like, yeah. What was the big first? Yeah, thing? yeah. So um, the big first thing, and my advice to everybody is like. I worked a corporate career in corporate sales. I worked at FedEx, you know, and then a larger company, transportation sales. And in 2009, um, I was always doing magic on the side. I was already making more money than in my corporate job. I enjoyed it more. I loved the art. I was like, man, what am I doing this? So 2009, I took a customer out to lunch. And I, in my car, I'm telling you, in my uh, 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 company car, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to take this guy to lunch. I don't want to, you know, listen to stories that I don't really care about. I want to do something I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't married. I had no kids, single, you know. So I was like, screw it, right? I've already built capital through uh, selling cards on the side already, and also working corporate job. And in 2009 or so, I had this collection that I bought. I always had other cards and stuff, but this collection uh, was incredible. This is the breakthrough moment, I think. Okay. It was a collection of the East Coast, and I believe the guy was one of the founders of Microsoft Excel. And I can't tell you his name, but you can probably figure it out. Figure it out. And yeah. basically what happened was 
uh, he had this collection, and we've been talking to him about, you know, he had alpha, beta, etc. He goes, Dan, you know, I also have these like original artworks, and I'm like, oh, I didn't think much of it. I didn't think much of it at all. The whole entire deal was probably like thirty-five thousand uh, dollars, a lot of money back in the day. But comparatively, and, it's a- yeah, yeah, yeah. But you never would know. And I go to this home. It was winter time with my friend Troy at the time, and we drove and the snow and all that. And basically, uh, there was these 25 paintings, okay, that were mostly Drew Tucker paintings. So we had all four Arabian Nights, Dan Dan, Hurt Jackal, Repentant of Blacksmith, and Sitting in the Bottle, right? And I immediately was like, what is going on? Because I thought all the art was gone, uh, you know, like, just disappeared, you know? And, And I started realizing that, man, this is what I fell in love with in the beginning and I have an opportunity to acquire them and and then go from there so uh, in that also was the Alpha Savannah Mm -hmm. Alpha Savannah was in there he thought it was a planes and I I didn't know either (laughs) you know because I was still you know I I, I thought it was the planes but then it's Savannah yeah and it's strange that when when you see them out of the frame without the cards around them they can trip you up you're almost like right and then then I also was like because I never bought any original art at that point I was you know I was always buying the cards right um and this is 19, this is like, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 2009, 2010, right? 2009. You would think by then, like, you know, like, uh, you know, I would have bought something, but I didn't, I thought they were all gone. So anyway, um, the, it's funny thing, the negotiation of this deal came down to the art. I'm not kidding. Came down to the art. He wanted to, uh, he wanted $3,000 for all the art Dancing. as part of the deal, 35000 Okay, okay. I wanted to pay twenty five hundred. Now I'm going to give you guys just a pro tip. And when you start doing these larger deals, which I've been doing, sometimes just you know just do it right for the better, the, you know, for the larger part. And that's what I did. Thank you, thankfully, because those pieces turned out to be priceless, yeah. right? I mean, Dan Dan got it's, stolen. I mean, yeah, it's and I sold Dan Dan, and that was still right. But but that was kind of a breakout moment in the sense that um, it was one of the larger deals I've done at that point uh, from a raw collection. But also, it's what got me motivated to start acquiring and getting involved in the art and artist proofs too. So I, uh, yeah. So after that trip, I mean, it was hilarious. We're trying to figure out how to put the art in a backpack and all oh that. I mean, it was it was insane. Wow. It was ridiculous. So uh, it was it was quite the journey, and uh, uh, you know, it's always about journey, not the destination. Yeah, I mean, that has to. Yeah. Like, looking back on it, are you almost like I, that? Seems like just like. Fate colliding with it's, yeah, you're, you're sort of weird, weird, and it's like it's. I think part of it was, uh, and on that trip also, I drove all the way to Connecticut to see Melissa Benson. Oh wow! And I acquired pretty much uh, all of her like a lot, like Shiv and Dragon, Nightmare, Lord of Atlantis artist proofs. So that trip together, I also bought artist proofs and I started getting that market. So it was like like you're saying like breakout moment. I've had lots of different things happen in my life, but. That was almost like an aha moment, like, wait a second, there's an opportunity here that it's not just to sell, but also to uh, invest and start putting awareness out there. Mm -hmm. Um, And I started doing some YouTube videos here and there and Mm -hmm. traveling and then what you see today. Would you say that you, I mean, I would think so. What would you say to the question, how much have you influenced the actual market growing? Because it's blown up in the past, you know, uh, past five, six years. I mean, it's insane how the... Paintings have gone from. I, I know that I heard that the original Edgar Markov was sold for around like seven, eight thousand, and it currently is valued at forty-five. Like, sure. I mean, do you think that you, like, were, I mean, how do you feel? Do you think you were part of that? Do you think you were, you know, part of that? Yeah, movement? I mean, I'm just gonna be, you know, I, I'm humbled by the whole thing. Like, I've been told that I've, obviously, one of the OG, yeah, you know, people involved, you know, in the art part of the growing part of it. Um, also with the graded cards, I was, you know, one of the first to grade the cards yeah. and then build a market off that. I think, you know, look, I mean, we, I think if you have a passion for something and, um, you know, you love something, it just naturally, I think you just, like, I don't look at it like I've, like I'm the guy, right? I, I think, I think a lot of it is that, um, we, we have an opportunity in life to make a difference and do stuff, right? And if you don't take the chance and take the risk. You're not going to be able to, uh, it's, it's never going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So I think I was right time, right place. Um, 
saw, you know, I had the foresight to invest and look at opportunities. That's the thing, too. And, yeah. uh, and I think that's with anybody. Anybody can do that. I think that opportunity is an ever, that's what makes America and the, you know, the whole capitalism, building your own business, American dream happen because you can create your own thing. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I did myself. And I, you know, I grew up very poor, uh, food stamps, Goodwill clothes, got one video game for Christmas, one video game for my birthday. Um, and my mom, you know, single mom struggled and, you know, I, I missed her a lot. She passed away last oh, year okay. and, you know, and she, uh, you know, but she taught me the independence, you know, she taught me how to, uh, be, grow up and, you know, you know, always follow through on your deals, always keep your word. And uh, she got to witness your success. Too. Yeah. 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 For the most part, you know, and, um, uh, she was a big part of that. She was a really big part of that. That's not, I mean, that's yeah. wonderful. And yeah. It's, so, you know, I mean, and I guess I, I mean, it's hard not to segue, but I no, it's fine. Uh, what we have here is um, oh, yeah. uh, it's a little card that's a Louis Vuitton box. Yeah, a Louis Vuitton box. My wife's uh, one of her things. I don't know. In, um, inside the Louis Vuitton box. Yes, yeah, so, you know, we might as well do it. So this yeah. is uh, uh, just uh, this is the original uh, Alpha Art for Black Lotus by Christopher Rush. Yeah. Uh, Chris is an incredible guy. I, I've had an opportunity to meet him in yeah. early in my career. And do you and you still got to know him very well? Like, what's like a what's like an interesting like sort of? Yeah, we're not we're not we're, we're best friends, but we did deals in like uh, different ways. Um, I would say, you know, something I just with with Chris is that um, Chris. I felt Chris was a, was a, was one of the most authentic artists and people I've met. Mm -hmm. He's a very. Um, it's like. You, you know, he's a, you see him, you're like, oh my God, that's Chris Rush. But, but it, he's so approachable. He's kind. He's not, he doesn't feel like he has like ego involved, mm -hmm. right? He's mm -hmm. very late. I think in Texas, when we went there uh, in Austin, when I saw him, and that's when I, I also bought, you know, Nasp, Nasp, Asp, and Arabian Nights. I bought some other paintings from him. And then we, and the best part actually was we went to uh, this barbecue spot, a bar, and we had a beer. And just having a drink with a legend, like literally a legend, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that that was kind of the trigger moment of why I think I do all this is that those moments of relationships, yeah, yeah. like this moment, like we're able to do something. Hopefully, your viewers will appreciate it. Hopefully, <laughs> this one day this will be in a museum or people, other public figures can see it. You know, public can see it. I mean, you, know? you have to have been, you have yeah. to have witnessed. This. I mean, yeah. you brokered some of the most important cards and paintings in the game. Sure, sure. It's just, it's unreal. I mean, like you, you. I mean, I wonder. You could possibly start a, like get a museum started. Like, oh well, like, I mean, it's just yeah. We, you have the ability to con to connect that. It's it's unreal. I, I think the short story on that is that you know I'm 42 now. I got a couple of kids, um, and when you the museum would take an incredible. It, it, it's more of a community effort. Yeah, right? absolutely. So if we had a uh, and I, we've, the community has talked about it, and I think uh, I think I think it's, I think it's going to happen because, like for example, Magic Japan and uh, Japan, they're looking to create a museum uh, in, in in Asia, the biggest, right? So yeah. I work with them. We're trying to get some like Wizards of the Coast cooperation, but I think beyond our time, like you know, this is this is going to be like everybody's going to know about it eventually. The pictures and the videos and the things of the community um, of these moments are going to be shown some. At a certain point, because obviously, like uh, being a gamer was very like, oh, you're a gamer, ooh, you know, like bad hygiene, whatever, right? <laughs> but now it's like that's cool. It is. It's very. It's, yeah. it's very and cool. We it's are, hip. It's hip yeah. To like and, and, and and I think it's going to pass along forever. So, and this painting is the Mona Lisa. Let's take a look at it, right? Mm -hmm. So this is uh, that's uh, it's a, some foam, and here it is. All right. So this is uh, using. Um, this is really cool. I and I'll take it out of the. Um, does it come out okay? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So I'll, I'll take it out of here in a minute, put it in the box. But um, Julie Barrow, uh, who I interviewed there. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to her. She owns Mainframe. Mainframe is a, 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 a framing shop in Seattle, Washington. And I have a really good video about uh, Kyle Abernathy. He's one of the owners there with Julie. Julie was actually sick and wasn't available. Um, he matted this, and it's a great video. He actually breaks it all up and cuts everything. It's really cool. I'll post that. Maybe you can link it. And um, yeah, what's really cool about this painting is that on the back here, um, and you'll notice something. And by the way, this is archival. Archival means that everything is acid-free. 
Um, you know, so this is a 1996 signature in, on April 24th by Christopher Rush. So what happened was this was originally owned by Peter Ackeson, and I was brokering the Peter Ackeson collection around 2012, something like that. This was framed really big, so it had a, um, a notarized COA, and it had this uh, signature, right? Hence this, uh, this, this yeah, is the matting. That's from like the original like backing of the... And we wanted to preserve it, so if you look very carefully, um, it's this is popping out on the uh, illustration board. So you have a board, and then imagine a square that was kind of on there. So Kyle did a custom mat with a lotus, and white obviously is a very... Uh, clean color but I, I I really I really gotta say about the guys at mainframe I trust their work 100% like I um, have framed tons of art with them and they if you shout out to them if you guys want to go to their website and, and such they uh, Julie does a great job Kyle does a great job and um, you know they, they ship all over so you can yeah, just, yeah. I mean, oh, they're amazing oh they're absolutely amazing. Yeah. I mean when I talk to Julie it's you know it's hard not to me she's uh, She's handled. I mean, she's handled some of the like biggest things. Of course, you know she can't talk about it, but it is fascinating to. I mean, it's it's uh, really does leave you speechless. I mean, like yeah. What do you think? What do you think by looking at this now um, in person? I, it's really hard to put words to it right right away. It's it's just, it is really like staring like live at history. I mean, like yeah. you're we're <laughs> examining a. The if not a D piece of magic history. Yeah. Like. There's nothing in magic that's more famous than the Black Lotus. It's just, yeah. That's, if magic were to, you know, I mean, look at the Magic 30 designs. They've got the lotuses all over. Yeah. Like, it is the icon. Why, why do you think, uh, let me ask you this. Why do you think that Black Lotus is the icon of magic? Well, it, yeah, has, why do you, yeah. it has to do with both the combination of the card becoming as, like, as it's sort of, you know, the uh, the reserve list, like, Grandmaster. And, but it also has to do with it being, like, one of the things that, that the early Magic players identify with. I talked to a lot of the... When I talked to the original artists and I went to talk to players who played from back then, there is such a, like, love for the original art that I think you see with some of the newer kids getting into, like, maybe 22-year-olds, 23-year-olds, they have, they have a zeal that... I'm starting to see them having a zeal for, like, the original magic art, but it's this this nostalgia, love, and sort of history of it, combined with the fact that it's now you know so uh, you know epic as far as playing power goes, and I think just that combination has lifted it to a mythological um, right. like level. It really right. it, it it really seems like I'm staring at something that would be mythological. Like I we just assumed that the black magic original painting had disappeared, and that the black those, lotus, yeah, yeah, like it's the, that we would never see this again. Yeah, this was just private owner has it and right and right. so this is a great gift to to be able to yeah. see it in any yeah. shape or form it's it, it's stunning it's really nice that we could connect because we've been talking and then um i kind of was secretive on like well i got something for you uh, but i couldn't really say it yeah and, it's uh, understandable and yeah. you don't want to like and, and, and i don't know like the, the price doesn't really matter but the reason why i'm here um is that i'm delivering to a client uh from overseas and the price sold for four million dollars. So, so it, 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 it's, the highest, it's the highest. It's the well, it, it matters, but I think some of us will be like, well, you know, you know, it's just you know, it, you know, there's obviously controversy somewhere. But uh, it is the second highest, I believe, fantasy art piece I ever sold. I think Frank Frazetta, uh, the legend Frank Frazetta, had a piece called the Egyptian Queen that sold for over five million on Heritage Auctions. You can look that up; that's public. And um, this is the second most valuable fantasy art piece that I know of. Um, comparable to Pokemon, you know, there's a $5.25 million Logan Paul owned um, illustrator card. If you look at his WWE, he's like WWF or WWE, he has an, a chain full of diamonds. It's amazing. He's wearing it. So, he's wearing the original art? No, no, like a, or a, a card, card. Okay. A, a Pikachu card. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then that, that's a good point is that the Pokemon cards were not original yeah, art. They, They're all digital. Yeah, right? Yeah. There might be sketches and whatever, but. That's also what makes magic, I think, ultra special. And you've obviously met, uh, spoken to a lot of artists, mm -hmm. is that the the art really gives the game life. You know, yeah, it's what makes the game what it is. I mean, that's how I started. Uh, I, I I pretty much just collect. I rarely sell anything. Um, I've learned my lesson on that because if you sell something, you start having this emotional attachment to it, and you feel really bad. Mm -hmm. um, and like the underground seat. 
you know, I acquired the Underground C, I sold the Underground C, then acquired it back for even way more money, and I'm never going to sell it. And yeah, I'm just going to pass to my family and be like, because it, it really, that's the one painting. It's like you adopted a child. It's like adopting a child. You know? I always thought about that painting. I'm like, man, I look at that sunset, Rob Alexander, you know, a friend of mine. You know, I remember him being in a Starbucks and showing it, we're first time reuniting a friend. And he was just like, yeah, you know, just it, it, it just makes you go away somewhere. The underground scene. That's mm -hmm. my, that, that I get asked, like, what's my favorite painting? Artistically beautiful. I love it. Uh, Black Lotus is a, you know, I think um, to your the question of iconic, I think you're absolutely right. This has become um, it's, it's kind, kind of like, you know, like I, I know like random moms that, you know, don't know anything about magic. But they're like, oh, Black Lotus? Yeah. Yep, that's, that's it, right? You know anything else? You know, Guardian Beast? No idea. And... You know what's really, no idea. and what's fascinating too about this is that like this right. is something that could contend with like the legit, like the art market at large, right? I mean, sure. And it's it's like nobody. It's First, almost like best right. kept secret because it's right. these well, these we, are prices that you know yeah that you know the famous artists like Picasso and stuff like that are you could get like a print or something like by them like yeah you can so, get it yeah I mean prints are not going to be in a million uh, but you well, can like get, a maybe a sketch yes yeah, yeah, yeah sketch you can get you know a hundred thousand or so but you're right absolutely right fine art. Is um, you know we're talking you know fine art obviously Monet's and all that they're yeah hundred millions and dollars but this is uh, an echelon that is um, you know that seven figures is a big deal right my my feeling on it financially is and I was actually debating actually purchasing it myself right it was a situation where uh, I, I didn't want to tie up more capital into art I have a large position in art but I was very close to doing it but. Um, I feel financially, this piece could very easily be an eight eight figure piece uh, in our lifetime, yeah, for sure. And then when we pass, you know, and all that, um, I wouldn't. I, I I know it sounds ridiculous to say this, but if it if it's a nine figure piece, hundred years, two hundred years from now, you know what? I you know I've no doubt. You know, for example, a, a Mickey Mantle card. So for twelve point six million dollars, an SGC nine point five for those. You care about those kind of cards, um, twelve point six million. Mm. And I mean, then and there's PSA. There's a PSA ten. Mickey Mantle is only three of those in the world. Nineteen fifty two tops. Uh, a guy, the guy got offered uh, thirty million. Turned it down. So that card's probably fifty million, right? Like, and how do you broker that? How do you do? How do you even do that? How do you? Yeah, how do you do yeah. that? How do you broker that? How do you decide? The Black Lotus to, to me, to an, I think to every Magic player, we would say, okay, it's priceless. You, you, yeah. You how do you price a priceless thing? I mean, is do you yeah. sit down and how do you figure out like the ins and outs of like when you when you broker right. painting? Like, what do you do? Is yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the brokering. This is I think this is it's fascinating because you are also a, a, representing some artists and. Um, in this particular deal, every deal is a little different, but they all kind of the same in that, right? This particular deal, uh, the owner, uh, uh, Josh you know, uh, Battelle, he was, you know, he's public. He owned it, and he lives in like Utah, and he's looking to sell it. And uh, he actually was part owner uh, of the piece with another gentleman who passed away, so mm -hmm. part of an estate. And so it was locked up in you know probate. Uh, you know, all that kind of stuff, just, or whatever the situation of, and they finally was able to sell it. So in that Peter Axon collection, he had the Mox Emerald, uh, Time Walk, Mox Jet, and then uh, Mox Sapphire, right? Yeah. Ironically, over the years, I've actually repurchased the Mox Sapphire, uh, the Time Walk also. And I also acquired the Mox Pearl. So, so when you say repurchase, so you owned the Mox Pearl, but then you, you brokered again. Well, the well, well the Mox Pearl I never owned, but okay. the Time Walk from the original Peter Atkinson collection, um, me, my Weissman, and another uh, investor, three ways. It's something like real estate, right? Yeah. We invest. We are th three way into that piece. The Mox Sapphire I own outright, um, and then the Mox Pearl I am fifty percent owner, right? But I guess, I guess what I'm trying to sum up here for this is that for the brokering side, you um, you know, Josh wanted a price. Uh, so then what I did was, you know, as a broker, you feel obviously the buyer, you have the seller, the buyer, you're the middleman. And I was able to get 
it, it, I mean, it's pretty, I mean, if I showed you the, the message string, it's pretty crazy, like just the amount of communication. Yeah. And it's crazy. You're, you're, you're doing this all over just, me, you know, messaging right. or whatever, a phone call. And um, we were able to hammer down a price. And this is kind of interesting. I was in Tampa Bay uh, doing some business, Florida. And during the, remember the guys, the hurricane that occurred recently? Yep. Well, this, hur this hurricane was going to touch down. And if I didn't leave, I was going to be stuck. And, this, and I had to pick this painting up in Washington, D.C. That's, that's what it was uh, stored at the time. So I was like, screw this. I am not going to stay in Tampa, get stuck in a hurricane. And, and, and that's what would have happened. If I would have stayed in Tampa, I would have been yeah. gone. So, yeah. so anyway, I, I went to, uh, you know, and a lot of these deals, you're not shipping. Uh, people ask, do you ship, this, you ship art? I never like shipping art, ever. It's really stressful. very stressful. It, shit happens. I don't know if I can say that. You can curse. Yes. Fuck, man. Shit happens. <laughs> so... And so I like to hand deliver. People say white glove delivery, you know, whatever, right? But I think that's what you what I what I like to do. So I picked it up, and then um, I arranged the the buyer to come here. And t today is Saturday, so Sunday they'll be gone completely. And somewhere, somewhere uh, not in the U.S., uh, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's like it's gone. Yeah. And so it's just, um, but that's kind of how the process works. So you have this large amount of money that comes to me, right? Then um, I obviously have some type of cut, right? Mm -hmm. And then I wire the money back uh, to the uh, uh, the seller, right? You know, and I'm li I'm liable for all this, right? If something happens, I have to take responsibility. It's terrifying, is yeah, it? Like it, a little, like, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like a well, you know, I don't know if you're gonna bite my neck right now. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, you know, I tried. I don't. You know, that's why my friend Kip's here. <laughs> I don't. I try to yeah. ask permission. You know, like you know. Get consent before neck biting. It, but like, it, it it is Halloween. So yes. Yeah. Well, yes. And so, but every, day, every, every day, day is Halloween with me. But uh, <laughs> but yes, I fit in a little bit normally. But I mean, honest to goodness, it's like it has to be a little bit terrifying, right? Because it's like, I mean, do you ever? I mean, do you you seem so like Trust at me. ease about? it. I am because I also do a lot of high end magic deals, multi millions, and yeah, um, it's like, I, I've I've carried millions of dollars in suitcases. I've traveled and uh with high-end cards you know so so, so i i know i know it sounds a little like i don't want to sound like i'm full of myself but the truth is once you've been doing this for so long um it's like second nature and you don't think of it as it. it's almost like gambling where let's say you put, i don't know if you ever would put like a big bet on blackjack five thousand dollars something you don't think of them as like uh cash you're just chips at this point right you know, or an, like, for example, you look at a, a restaurant, you know, a high end Michelin restaurant, you know, they're creating beautiful meals that we're like, what the hell's going on? I could never do this. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. But they do it every day. You know, so it's the same idea. I think for me, you know, I'm uh, it's just amazing to just be a part of the community. Uh, I really wish this I really wish for Magic 30. They would have done like more of a nostalgic area. You know mm -hmm. how they did all the. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, they, they did like the different planes, but there right. wasn't really. They but were... but if this is celebrating the thirty years of ma magic, why not have historical things and kind of like a mini museum? Yeah, you have all that space. They well, yeah, there was a lot of it that was underutilized. In, yeah, in sort so of that was history. kind of I think uh, un unfortunate. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no, I mean it's it's yeah. again it's 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 an honor to even be involved with this. Um, I I. I know that you, I'm, I'm checking it, just want to make sure the time is good, because I know you've got... Oh, time. I don't even know what time it is. It's yeah. at 12.30. I mean, I'm going to interview at 1, yeah. But yeah, I just want, I wanted to make sure, but I mean, this really is... Plenty of time, yeah, talk. Yeah, it is such a, it's an honor to, to do this. I mean, when <laughs> when when you found out, and when I got the text from you, it was like, uh Well, I sent you a picture. Yeah. And they're like, is that what I think I was is? like, is that a is... print of the <laughs> Black Lotus? <laughs> and he's yeah. it's like, no, wait, I don't think that's what... Something very special, and I, you know, just knowing who you are, knowing yeah. what you've you've dealt with, I was like, I don't think he would be excited over a, a print of the Black Lotus. Right. And I was right. just like, okay, wow, that's right. this. It literally, this is big, this is bigger than anything that's happening over yeah. at the thirtieth. Well, it's, I don't know about that, but yeah, I mean, oh. maybe, maybe so. I mean, in, in our in our old school world, you know, the you know the the people that have started it, I think it is, and I think even like, uh, but I, I think what's going to happen is I hope that it does. Get displayed one day. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, one I, and, and, I, and I'm willing to, um, you know, share my collection and uh, be a part yeah. of that. But I, I can't personally, not only financially, but more like time-wise, stress-wise, 
it, it, it's like having another job. Absolutely. Yeah, you know how it is. Absolutely. You know, it's, like, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. But I mean, yeah. even if like a virtual tour of like, I sure. mean, of, like your pieces would be yeah. I mean, that stuff yeah. for like, history. I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe yeah. you don't want to necessarily yeah. let everyone know where things are or whatnot right. like that. But if you know, like, there was ever a way to to help yeah. you set up a like a just a one night gallery where you, you put things yeah on yeah it sounds yeah i mean there's a lot of logistics security is obviously the yeah, big the, problem yeah um and i i yeah but I, I think i think as you know as you like as i've gotten older these type of memories and experiences value are way higher than just like when you're younger you're just like right hungry to you know make that buck right mm -hmm. now it's more about let's do things together and share the stories so, is there yeah. a piece of magic art that you've not like that that you wish you could have gotten like what's one oh, that you, like what's one that you like really ally from cairo <laughs> <laughs> this guy here has it ah, i see <laughs> i see um one one piece just one piece are you if several yeah. I mean, whichever are we talking about map magic or what um yeah magic but i mean if there is if there is anything like in the fantasy realm you want to i mean i'm open yeah. I, I love discussing art in general so it's it's yeah yeah um i think i think like like for magic for magic, uh, the underground sea is like if you talk about grails because we use this word a lot, mm -hmm. but that's like my grail. So I, I've already. So you've already got your. You, there's not. Grail, yeah. You've got your grail. <laughs> but but is there a runner-up grail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, if I. I got away. <laughs> yeah, the 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 grail that I got away. Well, I don't think it's really. I think the owner might be selling. I don't know. Is definitely the Vesuvian doppelganger. I grew up loving that painting. Um, I just, I actually own the original sketch of oh, it. Wow. Um, I actually own all the sketches except Regeneration for the uh, Quinn Hoover. Um, mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's you know, that, I think that's the one painting because when I was younger, I opened up, you know, like packs and saw it, you know, it was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. the, the line work and the details and the vibrant colors are absolutely insane by Quinn Hoover. Absolutely the same. Probably the yeah. most talented. One of my, it's yeah. it's a real shame. I mean, oh, both wow. him and, and Christopher, it's, it's, they're yeah. gone. And it's like, you yeah. know, I talked to a good handful of the original 25. Right. But it's, it, it does break my heart to know that I won't, you know, get a chance to talk to them about it. So, like, what, when you, did, did Christopher talk to you about, like, you, I, I heard you say a fun story about the way the colors. Oh, had, yeah. Had ended up on so, it. So, the, the big thing here is, uh, obviously, the Lotus is, the, you know, I, I can't, I don't think there's, um, he mentioned anything there. But. This green um, splatter that you see, um, that he told he mentioned was created by using a Safeway. Safeway is a grocery store, and a shop a kind of a plastic bag, and he just mixed it all in and just went boom. And I asked him like, "Are you you didn't paint this green? You know, because it looks it looks so like it almost looks like um, like like, like yeah, no, it, it looks like my, the zoom in shot of like a like a, like a plant leaf, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly the type of thing. It's very detail like almost like veins and stuff right no that was splatter from a safeway shopping bag pretty yeah. amazing so that uh that that's a fun tidbit yeah. how old was christopher when he painted this he, oh i, I don't know i don't so remember, young yeah they, i think he passed in 2016 i don't i don't i have his yeah i have that information yeah, i think that yeah. he was i mean he must have been maybe but i mean i don't think anybody was older than like 29 i think yeah was, everybody yes for yeah. might have been the oldest yes for uh you know, enlisted uh, people from the Cornish art of yeah, they were yep, the and, together. yep, yep. Julie Brell is in there, mm -hmm. Cornelius Brudy, Brian Snowdy, all those guys. Yeah. So I, I've been again, right time, right place. I was in the in a Seattle in that area. That's where I'm from originally. Okay, yeah. Right. So Bellevue, Seattle, and I just just went all in. That's all it is. I literally went all in. So I'm gonna, you know, you know, just meet with artists and uh, you know, and that's what I built my career off of. And obviously the cards, you know, kind of. Continued on with that. I mean, have you been? Yeah. Is there any alpha um, art that you have like that you haven't dealt with? I mean, I feel like you might. Have oh, with, like all. Like, yeah. All what's of it? Them, right? So what's really interesting is that most of the alpha art out there, I've either sold, brokered, consigned. I don't know. Whatever. Right. Some way. There's a guy. Um, uh, uh, his name is Paul. I don't know if his real name is Paul. He has an incredible collection. He got it from the Wizards Gallery years ago. And he has the Time Twister, the Ship and Dragon, Nightmare, um, stuff like that, right? And his collection was is pretty. I, I never was involved in that, but everything else I've had some type of opportunity or something. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's been it's it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing because I remember another story where Jasper and Peter Atkinson were at his house, uh, Peter's house, and all this art 
alpha art was just lined up like a like a you know like Unreal. a like a yeah lineup and you're just kind of figuring out what this is going to be and the, you know and it's just like think about that it's like the olden days of magic that's what it was they peter told me a story where their first shipment of alpha was in his long and he's like yeah if it rained it would have been gone wow and he just had all those he has so much stuff so I have videos, you know, I have a YouTube channel, not plugging it, but you know, plug Shannon away. Shannon basically plug away. <laughs> has good stories about Peter, uh, sharing like the olden days of magic. Peter's, you know, uh, now, uh, uh, he, he was a big investor of uh, Gen Con, which is a mm -hmm. great event. Peter's a great friend. And uh, Peter um, has amazing tales also. I don't know, did you interview Peter yet? Not yet, no, I mean, that would be- a I'll, 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 You should definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll mention something. That, that would be, be fantastic. Yeah, Peter's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, legendary like all these legends that you've that you've dealt with or that you've you know handled yeah. i mean like it's like it's it gotta be like kind of pinch me moments where you're like yeah it's it's fun it's like, fun and uh i just like the i just like the, the just the more like outside of the conversation mm -hmm. you know where we can just play some magic or you know uh, grab some food whatever i think that's really cool and yeah I, yeah I think it's the best part the social aspect of of magic is the thing that makes it a very special game right because like we, I mean, right. when we play commander with a friend like we have games where like it's we start playing commander and then before we realize it we stopped and we're just having a conversation and then the game picks up like you know 20 minutes later after the conversation's over right you know, exactly kind of stuff, so. exactly same idea exactly exactly yes. well this is just uh again like there's there's uh, there's worlds i could uh, there's like so much that i want to ask you but, sure sure uh you know i know that we're short for time and we got you got stuff to do well how about two two more questions um more? two more questions you got any more uh, questions <laughs> Actually, ask the Barbara Walters yeah. question. If you were a twee, what twee would you be? No, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, What's a twee? A twee is Barbara Walters trying to say tree. Oh, okay. <laughs> but <laughs> um, so, okay. Uh, let me think. Uh, is there um, of like the current like second wave or even third wave generation magic artists that are out either? Hmm. You know, we'd say I'd say second wave are maybe someone like um, Ryan Pankhurst or you know like. Um, like Chris Ron, right? right? Then third generation are the ones like actually coming out now. Like uh, right. uh, Greg Bobrovsky is who I, one of them who I represent. Um, Carly Mazur just came out. She's making waves. Do you have any uh, personal like favorites of those? Yeah. Like, so um, I'm obviously you know old fart now. You know for the magic world, and um, I, I have love for all the my favorite artist in the older generation is uh, Rob Alexander. Um, I love his art and Drew Tucker. By my, Drew Tucker's art is so emotional, so passionate. I've commissioned him to do other pieces that are just, uh, you know, lar much larger. I just a sweet guy. Yeah, yeah. and he, he lives near me. You know, I just love the, love hanging out with the guy. It's a great guy. It's great to see great him back guy. in the game too. Like, yeah, he's, he's like, amazing. He's, he's uh, got new artwork. You know, like they finally right. like, Wizards is finally getting it. They're finally saying like, right. oh wow, there is this great love for these people right we right. should maybe ask them back and yeah it's always been my like intention whenever i talk to anybody who has you know like uh, sandra everham like julie barrow I, i'm like i know it's a very thin chance but i'm like if there is a way you could do it i just i love the full circle aspect of it right you know and then to your question on the newer artists i i think chris ron would be by far my ultimate favorite chris yeah. is a great guy and you know, he's a friend of mine and his art is just, you know, legendary. Yeah. I mean, just look look at his art. It's just uh, like, what what is going on? I think he he wouldn't yeah. he wouldn't incredible. He won't like admit to it, but I really do believe he incredible is art. also part of the reason why the art market exploded because he was the one yeah. who was pushing the oil aspect of it. Sure. Like now there are people doing oil over digital because of the way that they see his stuff Correct, yeah. selling. It's 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 incredible. I think you mentioned that question earlier about art market. I think maybe that's that's a good question. Is that the explosion of like the magic art market has evolved over the years, but it's the the newer pieces like that Tyler Jacobson piece with the D and D crossover. Yep, the Tiamat. Yeah, so for so. like uh, not yeah. Tiamat, but there's a, another character uh, from D and D. So for like one hundred and fifty five thousand dollars or yep. something. Yep. Yep. And so you look at something like that newer art, and then obviously four million dollars for the Lotus. Um, you start to wonder like you know. What's the investment potential here? What's you know how does this work, right? You know, do I sell it and retire, right? Or I don't know. Um, my only thing, my my number one advice always is just do it because you love it. That's it. You buy something you like, you just have passion for it. If if it goes to nothing, you still like looking at the art, right? That's how I started out. I wasn't. I really liked the art. Like that's all I really liked was yeah, the art. Right. Now it became a business. I have a 
family to feed, etc. But really, I just keep buying art and I rarely sell. So um, as far as the explosion, as I see in the future, uh, I have no doubt that the art's going to continue to rise. I think there's, it used to be more, it used to be like 80% digital. And then there's like, really, yeah, it was really like Chris Ron, Ryan Pankos, yep. Matt Stewart, uh, Luke, Lucas Graciano. Mm-hmm. Those guys were like the traditional newer guys. Yeah, Everybody exactly. else was, Wyoming Nelson did some, right? But then it's like all digital. Right, yeah, for but what happened? Period. Even a guy, even like uh, Eric Deschamps, Deschamps? Deschamps? Yeah. he was doing all digital, and now he's doing some traditional. Yep. And so you look at all this stuff, and even Steve Argyle did some traditional, mm-hmm. right? It's, yeah, I, he's all do digital. I told yeah. Greg, I said, listen, he did all yeah. digital when he debuted in Infinity, and I said, you got to repaint him. I mean, sure, this, this is what the people, and and yeah. lo and behold, it's the people. I, I mean, you can't beat it. I, it's not that, I, and I'm not arguing that digital yeah, 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 yeah. is a lesser form. I mean, you can use both of them in equal ways but there is something magical about seeing a physical piece in front right, of you there's just right. you can't you can't deny it I oh see, you see emotion in brush strokes yeah you do like, I mean, it's hard to very it's really hard even digital to it's i mean there are some incredible digital artists out there that are able to like because there are some people who are very like oh digital you know it's it's soulless and blah 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 and then you show them a digital piece they're like see painting is so much better but and then but just in my opinion, I respect digital art. Just I, I love digital art too. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. fantastic. But... Another artist I forgot to mention, obviously Rebecca Gay. She's yeah. one of my friends. I have a whole room dedicated to Rebecca Gay. She's insane. I love her gallery work. It's very she emotional, rooms, like... sexual, passionate. I just love that type of style, mm-hmm. surrealism. Um, yeah, it, maybe one of these days you can come to that room and I can show you a bunch of cool stuff. I, I, uh, I, I think it's. Uh, um, Rebecca Gay is, yeah, I, and also, I'm sorry, Donato also. Donato yeah. Gencola, uh, probably the best business person and one of the best artists. He's such a kind yes. person. Yes. He's also an engineer. I don't know if you guys knew I that. I didn't know that. No. He's an yeah, engineer, very talented. Really? Wow. So, yeah. Dang, how much, uh, how much talent can you have in one? Yeah, amazing. amazing. Apparently very humble. When you interviewed him, he didn't mention no, he didn't mention oh. that. He's okay. Donato, oh. when we were, when I was interviewing, him, he was he was painting as he was interviewing, and he did not miss a beat. Like he was interviewing the questions and painting. I was just like, wow, look at that mind. Oh, go. amazing! Yeah, love but, that task. I love that. But uh, all right, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for having me around, yes. man. It's thanks it's, for watching, guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank it's been you. Been an honor. Yeah. Bye-bye.